Hello again. I'm back with another video. This time it's a head-to-head -head competition of the Prismacolor Scholar Student Grade Pencils versus the Faber-Castell Polychromos Pencils. And today we'll be using the 60 pencil set for each. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not really a fair comparison as the Faber-Castell pencils are typically about four to five times the price of the Scholar pencils. However, the Scholar pencils do have an advantage as I have been working with them for a while now and I'm quite familiar with blending the colors. The Polychromal set is a new one and I'm still trying to familiarize myself with this set. The subject for the drawing will be Henry Cavill from The Man of Steel. I'll be using the Scholar pencils first for the left side of his face. So getting started, I'm using a peach and light peach for the skin tones and I've just shaded in a bit of his face. I've lightly traced the image out using the monitor tracing method shown in my tips number two video for a colored pencil. I've used dark brown and raw umber for the hair and I've gone over that with some black. And as you can see, I've broken my first pencil. Now that would be the white Prismacolor pencil. And I don't believe I was applying too much pressure. I wasn't burnishing or anything with it. So now I'm, I'm moving down to the uh, the neck, just filling things in a bit. Because I've traced so lightly with the 6H pencil, as I fill in the drawing, I have a tendency to just erase the lines with my hands. So sometimes I'll, I'll go over the, the whole image just lightly with, with some colors so I, I don't lose my reference lines. I use three different shades of, of red for the cape and uh, various blues for his suit. I wasn't able to get the right blue colors to represent the suit. I went for a traditional Superman blue. I tried to replicate the patterns of the suit, but I don't think it was very successful, and I don't think it was worth the effort. Uh, I probably would have just filled it in with solid blue color next time. You see I've broken one of the blue pencils there. Uh, again, I wasn't applying much pressure. While using the Prismacolor Scholar pencils, I had struggled once again with broken leads. I believe I broke about seven or eight leads just for this one drawing. In some cases, I was applying a good amount of pressure, but in others, that was not the case. For the broken lead problems with the Scholar pencils, I did find that if I switched to the Faber-Castell pencil sharpener, I tended to have less breaks. So the Faber-Castell sharpener, uh, it reduces the sharpening angle. So this means you have less lead showing, but this reduced angle, um, it results in, in less broken pencils. I don't think, I don't think I've broken any pencils after switching. Unfortunately, I didn't switch the sharpeners until I was nearly finished the drawing. Now I will have a little note at the end, just uh, showing you the sharpener and showing you the different sharpening angles. I used three to four different shades of red and orange for his emblem, as well as uh, a yellow and gray. The emblem also has this, this pattern, and uh, again, I just I didn't put too much effort in trying to mimic the pattern there. I've broken one red pencil, and then I've broken another red pencil. Again, as you can see, I'm not applying too much pressure. Uh, these just break fairly easily. I was fairly happy with the Prismacolor uh, Scholar pencils. Uh, I, I was quite happy with the skin tone. The hair turned out nice, although it would have been uh, a little bit darker would have been better. I was happy with the cape, and I thought the, the red looked quite good. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't happy with the suit. Uh, none of the blue tones were dark enough to uh, represent the suit. I think the only way I could have represented the suit correctly would have been adding uh, black into the blue, and I didn't really want to do that. So it's, it's, uh, it's certainly not the correct color of blue. But the overall result, uh, other than breaking a lot of pencil leads, uh, I thought it was pretty good. 
certainly the Prismacolor Scholar pencils are, are a nice pencil to work with. I'm just doing the finishing touches on the left hand side of his face. Just darkening it up certain areas of the, the face, trying to get the skin tones a little darker. And then I'll move on to the polychromos pencils. Trying to do the right hand side of the face, I struggled a fair bit. Uh, part of this was I couldn't take advantage of symmetry. So when I'm working on a forehead or a mouth, I might want to take that feature and fill it in completely. Take a tone on the forehead and move it all the way across, or, or a various shade all the way across the forehead, or even a forehead crease or wrinkle. But I couldn't take advantage of that when I did one side and then had to work on the other side. I was also struggling with trying to match up the tones because even though I'm trying to show the differences between the two sets, I am trying to make it so that there's not an obvious gradient between the, the left side and the right side of the face. I am trying to blend things in so the pencils don't stand out. An another significant issue was when I did the left hand side of the face, I inadvertently uh, erased or smudged out with my hand my trace lines on the right hand side of the face. And uh, as a result, I had to freehand in a lot of the right hand side of the face. My freehand skills aren't that great, and, and this became apparent. Certain features of the face just didn't look right. Um, I didn't quite get the eyes right. And uh, there was some issue, just minor issues with the jaw and stuff like that, where if I had the trace lines in there, uh, it probably would have looked a bit better. My inexperience with the polychromos pencils uh, also caused some issues. So I am essentially trying to match up tones with the scholar pencils, but because I don't really know which colors to use or which colors to blend, uh, I w didn't necessarily match up the tones very well. I did find that when I did the face, I wasn't I wasn't very confident and I wasn't very sure of of myself. As I moved down to the neck, I was more confident using the pencils, and I started to have a better feel for them. The polychromos pencils uh, did a lot better job on the hair. They could certainly produce darker browns than the scholar pencils, at least darker browns easier. The reds for the cape were also more intense, and I did not have any issues uh, trying to match the blue color of the suit with the polychromos pencils. I did, however, try to keep the colors similar, so again, I didn't, didn't produce this sort of gradient or divide between the left-hand side and the right-hand side to make the, the image look strange or silly. And as you'll see, probably towards the end, my freehand abilities aren't that great. I, I'm off on certain areas. The nose isn't quite right. Uh, the eyes aren't quite right. So rather than Henry Cavill, I find uh, the Man of Steel looks more like Derek Zoolander. Of course, as I get near the end of a drawing, I have a tendency to rush. I, uh, you know, typically I'll start out and do things in pieces. But as I get near that, that final where I think I might be able to get it done that last day, I tend to push myself and I tend to make some mistakes. So the blue patch of his suit didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. I think I could have done a lot better job on that, but I uh, kind of botched it. Here's the final result. Not 100% happy with it, but uh, I guess it's my first Man of Steel drawing and it's a good start. For the comparison between the two pencils, you can see that a lot of the Prismacolor Scholar pencils broke, but you can also see, or at least you should be able to see, you can, you can still do a really decent drawing with these pencils. So even though they're cheap, um, they're, 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 they're good pencils. You can blend with them quite well. Uh, they just break. And again, I might have found the solution to that. With the Polychromos, they were a bit frustrating to use because I'm not used to them. 
in the beginning, but towards the end of the uh, drawing, I was actually starting to really enjoy them. I will be doing a, a, a full review and tutorial of those uh, soon. The last thing I wanted to talk about was sharpening the pencils, not sharpening the scholar pencils. I, when I purchased them, I bought a scholar pencil sharpener, and uh, but recently I picked up a Faber Castell pencil sharpener, and the Faber Castell pencil sharpener has three slots for sharpening. One says color grip, and the other says univer the other two say universal. One's for quite a large diameter pencil. If you use the color grip slot, the angle on the pencil is uh, noticeably reduced. The angle on a a pencil that you sharpen with a Prismacolor Scholar, uh, it works out to be about 11 degrees, 11 degrees or 79 degrees, depending on which way you want to look at it. The Faber-Castell pencil sharpener leaves an angle of about 14.5 degrees. So when you sharpen it with the Faber-Castell, I've noticed that you're less likely to break the pencils. And so far, all the pencils I've been breaking using the Scholar sharpener, once I've switched over to the Faber-Castell, I haven't had any breaks yet. That's all for today. I should be back in a week or so with another video on color pencil tips and techniques. I also mean to do a complete review of the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. <laughs>